Hey, what's going on YouTube? How's it going? And welcome to Knowing Final Cut Pro 10 and After Effects with Joe D. Now, first things first. Thank you all who watches, who, who watch. It's really an amazing feeling seeing views. You know, one view, two views, and maybe a like. That really makes my day. Thanks a lot. And uh, I will continue to do these videos as time goes. So, Today what we're going to do is we're going to analyze and stabilize. Basically, we're going to get some content and make it smooth using two programs, Final Cut Pro 10 and After Effects. So this is a two-in-one tutorial. So let's get started. Let's watch our original footage here. So as you can see, this is an amazingly epic, horrendous shot of Homer Simpson. The footage is really really bad. So let's watch again. Notice how there's a lot of shakiness there, a little bit of, uh, you know, hesitant factors in it, and basically it's not usable. How am I going to use this in my film? I can't use this. So what I have to do is either discard the footage or stabilize it. So in my case, I need to show Homer Simpson, so I need to stabilize it. So Basically, let's analyze this one more time, and right off the bat, you notice something. The cameraman, whoever shot this, is poor. Why so harsh? Basically, he does not have a tripod, nor does he have a steady cam or a glide cam. Why? Because they're super expensive. I mean, I guess I understand him, but uh, basically, this does not flow with my project, so I need to stabilize this. So... Let's stabilize it. Now let's watch Final Cut Pro 10 and see how it stabilized this image. So let's play it. Now notice as we play it, it does a really nice job of stabilizing. It looks really, really smooth and as we go up, Homer Simpson looks really nice and everything else. So it does a pretty good job, Final Cut Pro 10, on stabilizing images. Okay, now that we analyze Final Cut Pro 10, let's go to After Effects and see how well it stabilizes images. So as we click play, look at that. Really <laughs> nice, really nice. A lot of information is still retained. Wow. So clearly, we see the winner here in its After Effects. Now After Effects, of course, is going to win because it's a compositor, unlike Final Cut Pro 10, it's an NLE, and it's used mostly, primarily, for cutting. So, we're going to cover on how to do it in Final Cut Pro 10 and After Effects. If you really want to see how it's done in After Effects and skip the Final Cut Pro 10 part, basically just click on the time below on the, in the description so you could skip to that part. But if you're curious, stick along, because we're going to analyze Final Cut Pro 10's content and see the pros and cons. So go ahead and click it. If not, then stay here. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and you stayed. That's awesome. Thanks. Now let's uh, actually look at how Final Cut Pro 10 is stabilized. Now let me give you the pros and cons of Final Cut Pro 10. Basically, it does a really nice job of stabilizing, but the bad thing is that it zooms in all the way in. You know, look at the original footage. It's this far, and in Final Cut Pro 10, we're this close. So, yeah, that's really evident. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 does a great job of stabilizing overall, in general, but it does not do a great job at retaining information. So. Why would you want to use Final Cut Pro 10 opposed to another program? Well, if you don't have another program, then obviously you're going to have to stick with Final Cut Pro 10. And if you are going to stick with Final Cut Pro 10, let me just give you some tips so you could keep while shooting. So if you're going to use Final Cut Pro 10 stabilizer, what I recommend you do is shoot your footage at a greater distance. So, for example, here in this shot, I shot this Homer doll two feet away. As you can tell. So if I really want to retain the this information like in the original footage, I would have to maybe stand a bit further back, maybe four feet, and I'll get this stabilized like exactly like this, but in this format. I hope you know what I'm saying. And I 
I'm, sure, I'm sure you will. But uh, basically, just a rule of thumb, shoot a little bit farther. As with any other compositor, you need to shoot a little bit farther because you know that if you're going to stabilize it, it's going to basically try to scale the image up in order to, you know, stabilize the footage. So let's get started with how to stabilize in Final Cut Pro 10. So basically, what you want to do is grab your clip. So I'm just going to copy this clip and I'm going to make a new project. So I'm going to go to File, New Project, and let's title this Homer FCPX Stabilize. Great. Now, here in our video properties, let's set automatically based on the first video clip. And since we're not going to work with audio, we really don't care, but I recommend you to choose Custom and Stereo. Okay, let's click OK. Now that we have our sequence open, what we want to do is we want to copy. So you would have to drag, obviously, from your event browser. So let me uh, zoom in by pressing Command Plus. And once I am zoomed in, all you have to do, and it's super quick, just click on your click. All right, see how I'm clicking on it? This is my original footage. All you have to do is do this in two steps. Click on your inspector window by clicking this button here. Now scroll down. Make sure you're on the video tab though. Scroll down until you see the stabilization palette. Once you see the stabilization palette, all you have to do is click on this square. Now once you click on it, notice how immediately it stabilized the footage. That's how it works in Final Cut Pro 10. All you have to do is basically just wait until it renders out, and that's it. You have your stabilized footage. So, let's play it back. And there, it's stabilized in Final Cut Pro 10. So remember, if you're going to stabilize in Final Cut Pro 10, make sure to shoot a little bit farther and shoot a little, yeah, have a little greater distance. That way you retain your information. But nonetheless, it creates, and basically it serves what it, you know, its purpose of stabilizing. Okay, now that we looked at how to stabilize in Final Cut Pro 10, let's go over to After Effects and see how it's done. So I'm going to change tones here for those of you who skipped. Okay, so you want to learn how to do it in After Effects. So let's get started. All you have to do is open up After Effects. So let's open it up. In my case, I already have it open. So let's create a new project. Okay, I have my window open. All you have to do is go to Composition. A new composition by pressing Command N. Now this works on a Mac or a PC, just letting you know. So now you have to set your presets or maybe custom, uh, customize your frame size. But in my case, I know that my frame size is 1280 by 720 and it's square pixels and the frame rate is 29.97. That might vary for you, just keep in mind. Now the duration is 40 seconds, but uh, don't worry, even though this clip is maybe, what, three seconds, uh, you could trim your composition once you have it active by pressing a keyboard shortcut. I'll show you how to do that. So let's title this composition name Homer Stabilize. A E for After Effects. Let's click OK. Now that we have our composition open, what you want to do now is import. So go to File, Import, a file. Let's import our original footage. Now in my case, I title it Super Special Montage. So now what you want to do is grab your clip from the browser, drag it over to your composition, and make sure it snaps, and let go. Once you let go, you should be able to see your image. Now in my case, I had an image earlier, so I have some black content in front. So let me just trim that. Never mind this. You will have a different thing. Okay. So this is my first frame. Now notice how this is our original media. Okay, now remember how I told you to trim down your composition. Okay, here how, here's how you do it. Go to the end of your media and press type the letter N. Great, as in Niagara. So basically you have a work 
space that's smaller and basically is just enclosed around your media. That way, whenever you render out your media and your effect, you don't have to render out the whole thing. I've done that before and it's super inefficient. So now that you have your original media inside After Effects, all you have to do is two steps. Make sure this is highlighted, go to Effect menu, then go down to the Distort option, keep on going down until you reach Warp Stabilizer. Click on it once and it should just do it automatically in the background. So notice what we're seeing right now. We're seeing a blue title bar titled Analyzing in Background. Step one out of two. Notice one more thing. There is a progress kind of, uh, you know, information here on the effect palette. Notice how it says right now the time remaining and also the percentage and the frame you're on. So right now it's analyzing frame 140, 150, 160 something out of the total frame rate of uh, 412. So once it's done analyzing, what it's going to do after analyze, it's going to stabilize. And once it's done stabilizing, then you're done. And basically you have the stabilized footage. So let's uh, wait until it analyzes. Yes, I'm not going to skip over this because we have a lot of time since you're watching this video. <laughs> so 14 seconds remaining, 13, 12, should be 10 seconds remaining now, 6 actually. Okay, it's almost done. Okay, now that it's done, it's stabilizing, step 2 out of 2. This takes a shorter amount of time since all of the work is done when it's analyzing. Boom. Now notice how it's zoomed in a little bit. Of course, it's going to have to zoom in a bit so it could kind of scale the image so it could stabilize it really well. So notice how our image is stabilized. Wow, look at that. Look at that. That's sweet. Wow. Now, all you have to do now in order to export this clip is just go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and go to the output module and then just click double click on it so you can make your adjustments let's say you want a different format or maybe you want a uh, you know different codec you could choose one of these here or you know just keep it as is as an animation codec and then just output to whatever name you want and click on this render button and you should be done go ahead and import it into your NLE whether it be Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, or other versions of Final Cut Pro. It all depends on your taste and preference. And that's how you stabilize content in After Effects. Well, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you like this video. I hope you leave a comment down below saying cool or awesome, and, uh, you know, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot, and uh, I'll just give you a before and after shot in the next uh, sequence. I, I guess the next five seconds. All right, thanks a lot, and make sure to watch my past two videos. Bye-bye.